The world is full of misconceptions. Chameleons change color to match their environment, and humans only use 10% of their brain. These are a few of the many misconceptions that have spread throughout society. Today, we will uncover yet another common misconception. That is, that all mutations are harmful. So are they? Imagine you're a chef and you want to perfect your signature recipe. You can keep following the same instructions over and over, but that would just make the exact same dish every time. There's only one way to improve the dish. You must change the recipe, or in other words, mutate the instructions. You can change the ingredients, tweak its quantities, and so on, and eventually you will have a slightly different dish. More times than not, the dish may taste worse than before, but every now and then, the dish may taste better. This perfectly leads us into mutations, but first, let's look at what's being mutated to begin with. The DNA, which is the recipe for creating the organism. It is the instructions that tell every single cell on earth what to do and how to do it. Each instruction is organized into individual genes. However, only a relatively small percentage of a cell's DNA contains instructions, and these coding regions are called exons, while the remaining non-coding regions are called introns. Just as how changing the recipe may make the food taste better or worse, changes made to the DNA also have a similar effect. So in short, not all mutations are harmful. In fact, some may even be beneficial. Most mutations that occur, just going by probability, happen in the introns, or the non-coding regions of the DNA. And as a result, they have little to no effect on the organism as the instructions or the genes remain unchanged. Things really get interesting when a significant mutation is made to a coding region, such that it affects the way the organism lives and works. In this case, the mutation may cause defects in an essential gene, or even remove the gene altogether. This can have many negative effects within the organism. Just imagine if you took out the tomato sauce from a pizza recipe. Ew. An example of this is a mutation that causes a genetic disorder within humans known as cystic fibrosis, which affects the lungs and has many other significant effects on the body. On the other hand, mutations can sometimes be beneficial, specifically when they make improvements to the existing instructions of the body, or they add a whole new set of instructions, unlocking new possibilities for that organism. In Western Africa, humans have benefited from a mutation that affects cells within the blood. When the individual inherits a mutation from both parents, it can lead to the genetic disorder called sickle cell anemia. However, if the individual receives it from only one parent, then it can surprisingly benefit the body as it has shown to be able to protect individuals from malaria. So now you know how mutations can affect organisms. But what if I told you that mutations are the reasons that human exists? Let's briefly take a look at the origin of life. It has widely been theorized that all life we see on Earth today started from a single cell over 3 billion years ago. So let's take a look at the three main possible scenarios that could have happened in the development of our species. In the first scenario, mutations do not occur at all. In this case, all of Earth would eventually just be filled with identical copies of the same cell. Why? Because mutations are the source of change. The second scenario would be that all mutations are harmful in which every time a mutation occurred, the cell would be more likely to die. In this scenario, future generations of the initial cell are either just an identical copy of it, or a worse version of it. Again, in this scenario, there is no option for any other life form. This brings us to our last scenario, where most mutations are harmful. However, some are beneficial. In this case, as the initial cell divides, harmful mutations may cause a very small percentage of its offspring to die but every now and then, a beneficial mutation may occur, giving the cell a new set of instructions. Over millions of years, as these beneficial mutations piled up, some cells gain new functions, such as the ability to detect light. Then over hundreds of millions of years, even more beneficial mutations accumulated, and some of these cells learn different ways to interact with other cells, forming multicellular organisms. Eventually, we reach the world that we live in today, in which the world is filled with millions of diverse organisms all with their own advantageous features that set them apart from others. Each and every one of these species originated from that first cell billions of years ago. Why was this possible? Because mutations are not always harmful.